Good Christ, that's fucking terrifying! But seriously though, if you want to get the viewer all paranoid, a creepy ass picture of Mickey Mouse will do it. Really, what is so evil about Disney? Tell me, oh wise one. <laughs> fail grammar is fail. Seriously though, it should be do you know who Walt Disney is? And to answer that question, yes I do. Since this video is full of shitty grammar, I'm not going to comment on it from now to the end of the video. Really now, I saw a video response to this that said it was Roy who was the Mason, not Walt. Also, so what if he was? Okay, interesting bit of trivia, although I doubt how authentic it is, but what does this have to do with Disney being evil? And here we see the problem with text rants or commentaries. If you don't edit it properly, it'll look weird and you may have false sentence endings. Also, I highly doubt that they had mind-controlled slaves. Oh, this should be good. As we go along in this video, I'll point out the fallacies, or logical fuck-ups, this person makes in this video. That much is true, but Club 33, from my experience, is just a restaurant. The food's pretty good if I recall correctly. There is a reason why your teachers discourage the use of Wikipedia for essays. It is not 100% reliable. Hell, the site's motto is the free encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Sure, most articles provide citations to the sources used, and Wikipedia can be useful for that, but that's about the only thing it's good for. Hell, I'm not even using Wikipedia for this commentary. I'm going with the info presented by the video response in my own common sense. Once again, it was Roy, not Walt, who was a Freemason. You know what? Screw it. I'm not going to argue this point as this video is going to be longer if I do. And now you know we're dealing with a batshit insane conspiracy theorist. Why? It's the reference to the Illuminati. I dealt with someone like this once. He said some bullshit about how the Freemasons were using black people as a tool for marketing or some shit like that. First of all, you spelled imagination wrong. Second, the reason why they keep releasing their films on the current media format, in this case DVDs and Blu-ray, is because they want to keep making money. Third, the reason why no one has charged Disney is because most people realize that there's no point in charging Disney with something that was either accidental or misinterpreted. Also, drop the from the last sentence. I thought the name of the company responsible for the Forbes 500 was Forbes Magazine. At least the person who made this video didn't use Wikipedia for this point. I think.
This much is all true. Subliminal messaging does work like this. Hell, you can actually get tapes and CDs designed to influence you to stop smoking or control your appetite. I actually experienced this firsthand when I did neurofeedback as one of the CDs I listened to was designed to trick the listener's mind into controlling their appetite, thus aiding in weight loss. However, it hasn't been proven that companies use this as a means of getting people to buy their product. In my experience, it wasn't subliminal messaging that got the product into my head, but the repetition of the commercial. This does happen and has been proven to work as the human mind learns best when subjected to something over and over again. Oh, this should be good. I highly doubt they were able to hide subliminal messages in the early shorts as the technology for animation was in its infancy. Wanna know where I got that info? Why, I got it from my early film history class. Ain't it cool what you can learn from school? And now we look at yet another important point for both arguing and writing an essay. Your proof. Your proof, or if you want a more elegant term for it, your evidence, can make or break your argument, be it an essay or reasons why you like something. So let's put on our brainy specs and poke holes in this guy's reasoning. I don't know. I think that's his knee. Yeah, you can't tell from this angle, but I think that's the priest's knee. From what I heard, the artist was exhausted and it was four in the morning, so he wasn't able to draw a straight line, resulting in that fuck-up. Also, IT'S ONLY VISIBLE IF YOU FUCKING LOOK FOR IT! It's two frames long and very hard to spot. You'd have to have really sharp eyes to see the damn thing, so I highly doubt any kids watching would notice. Okay, plain and simple, it looks photoshopped. If it is true, maybe it was a dirty joke left in by the artists. Besides, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was not intended for little kids. It was intended for a slightly older audience. This is another bullshit point. First of all, that's a bunch of flower petals, not the clouds in the background. And second, that's the word SFX, a nod to the sound effects crew that worked on the film. What's next? Are you going to bring up the whole idea about how Disney ripped off Osamu Tezuka's Kimba the White Lion for the idea of the Lion King? By the way, I can easily poke holes in that theory, too. You see, during the 80s and 90s, America got anime that bombed in Japan. A couple of infamous examples include Garzy's Wing and Doom Megalopolis, the latter of which is being reviewed by Ben at the Sage of That Guy with the Glasses dot com as we speak. Kimbo was one of the good titles and therefore would not have been released in America. It was a complete coincidence that the two titles are similar. Oh, come on! You didn't even try with that point! 
Disney never even made a movie based on The Great Gatsby. Besides, the uniform is the wrong color and Nazi officers always wore red armband with the swastika on it. Ha! Yes! Another chance to show off what I know! Okay, first of all, this film was released in 1940, and at that time, it was acceptable, if not mandatory, to depict black people in such a racist way. The civil rights movement started around 1960, if not a little later. At that time, racist attitudes towards black people were beginning to change, making the edit understandable. Also, it's expensive to redraw sequences in animation, which is why they never bother redoing the scene so that it would be in time with the music. That technique is known today as Mickey Mousing. For once, I agree with the maker of this video. It is wrong that Disney lied about the existence of Sunflower, although my guess is they did so because they didn't want to risk losing money. I have absolutely no comment on this. I really don't. If I remember correctly, his mother didn't die. She was removed from the story, yes, but she didn't die. You must be really stupid then! Before I go into this point, I should mention that I have never seen Bambi, so I don't know why his mother died, therefore I will not argue with that point. With that out of the way, KIDS FUCKING PRETEND! So fucking what if they went, Okay, let's pretend our parents are dead. They're fucking kids, it's normal for them to do shit like that. Furthermore, hasn't it ever occurred to you that there is a REASON for Disney to kill off the mother of the main character? One possible reason is it shocks the child into realizing that they shouldn't take their mother for granted, and it helps them to appreciate their mother more. In a way, it is celebrated with this. The mother is treated as an important part of a child's life, and thus should be appreciated. You could even go so far as to say that with certain families, the mother is viewed as God according to the child's perception. I know for fucking sure that I appreciate and love my mother. She's been someone I can lean on for various reasons. I'm good now. First of all, I highly doubt that Disneyland would have that epic failure of a ride in its theme park. It looks like one of those cheap-ass coin-operated rides you would find at a drugstore. Second, this looks like the point of the video where you just started pulling shit out of your ass. Wow. D just wow. <laughs> yeah. 
You did not just go there. No, seriously. You did not just go there. You did! You son of a bitch! You did! That's it! Time for Don Maku! I'm gonna burn you to the ground! Spell cards! Hell and heaven meltdown! Okay, sorry about that. First of all, The Chronicles of Narnia is not a Disney title. It was a series of books written by C.S. Lewis. Disney just got the rights to make the Narnia films. Second, Mr. Tumnus is a fawn, which is a fantasy staple. You are thinking of satyrs as all of the behavior you mentioned, which does have some accuracy, is specific to satyrs. Fourth, I'm pretty sure that what you mentioned is not behavior typical of Pan. Fifth, Wikipedia is not reliable. And sixth, Lewis was glorifying Christianity with the Narnia books. What's so bad about that? This is more proof that you fail forever at arguing. Oh, isn't that cute? But it's wrong! First of all, Lucy Pevensey is the name of the character. The actress playing her is named Georgie Henley. Second, Mr. Tumnus is the name of the character. Third, there is a reason why he's inviting her to spend time with him. He was working with the White Witch, played in the movie by Tilda Swinton. Attention, viewers! This bunny has a pancake on its head, GLaDOS is a potato, and this squishy is big and fluffy. That is all. In all seriousness, Roy was the Mason, the Freemasons are little more than a fraternity, that was a sentence fragment, you showed a picture of a black mass, and you suck at making arguments. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up a little. W was that an image of the Wizard of Oz? Okay, now I know you're not trying anymore. That movie isn't even a Disney title. You know what? I'm gonna speed through the last part of the video and give you my final thoughts. I can't take much more of this. Thank God I'm done! Final thoughts, this video sucked and it sucked bad! 
The presentation was all right, but there were tons of spelling and grammatical mistakes, and the points were poorly researched and utter bullshit. A world of your own, huh? When I think of having a world of your own, I think of something like the world of Narnia or Middle Earth, not Forks, Washington. I'd rather have an adventure with a god lion or the Fellowship of the Ring than be stalked by an emo sparkly wannabe vampire any day. Don't take my word for it, but aren't the films different from the movies? I wouldn't know because I wanted to save my brain cells. I beg to differ. I have little interest in necrophilia and bestiality. I have little interest in Edward and Jacob. I'll stick with other better characters, thank you very much. I have no comment on this. If you want to hear my opinion on the movies, go back a bit. Right, I'm gonna sum this up really quickly so I don't talk your ear off on this. Twilight is not romantic! It glorifies domestic abuse, necrophilia, zoophilia, pedophilia, child grooming, codependence, and basically says that if you don't have a lover or spouse, you are nothing! Being a survivor of 13 years of child abuse, this really, really, really pisses me off. Great message to send to kids, Meyer! Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> what action? Seriously, what action? Is there a dance-off with sparkles or something? Meyer's writing style is so bad I couldn't even see if there was an action scene. If you want action, go check out Helsing or something. That series has more action than you can shake a steak at. GLaDOS is a potato. Your argument is invalid. Seriously though, what's the point of that? Hair color preference has no point whatsoever when it comes to arguing something. It's like Guptill's apparent hair fetish. It's a stupid point! Is that so? I'd think that referencing a better couple that's been together through good and bad times would be better than referencing a dysfunctional fictional one. Are you going to give us reasons as to why she's a good writer? 
Unless you give reasons for an argument, it's gonna fall apart. I can easily give you proof as to why Maya is a lousy writer. She uses purple prose, she fails at writing characters, she doesn't do research. I could go on for a long time, people! No, love at first sight is not real. You can't have someone figure it out from the instant you see them. They could be hiding stuff. True love comes from bonding over time, not seeing someone that makes you horny and walking up to them and going, OMG, you are smacks on, let's make babies! If you tried that, you'd get your ass kicked. You're doing it wrong! But seriously, at best, their relationship is one of lust, not love. Did... did she just make an argument I agree with? HOLY SHIT! <sighs> I should have guessed. Great, we have a yaoi loving Twitart. Yes! Yes, it is wrong! I do not want to see a reanimated corpse having anal sex with a wolf! That shit is disgusting! Ugh! They are not werewolves. Werewolves shapeshift under the light of a full moon, are weak against silver, and fear wolfsbane. They do not first explode into gigantic wolves, nor do they have a telepathic connection to pack members, although I have seen some interpretations that give werewolves the ability to shapeshift when angry. But, they are also affected by the full moon. Also, real werewolves do not imprint on little kids. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting for this point to come up. You know why? This gives me a chance to really show off my knowledge of mythology. First of all, according to the original myths, vampires were not sexy-looking men or women. They were reanimated corpses with brains. The myth was initially a means of explaining the natural process of decay in a human body after death. Eyewitnesses claim that when they opened up the caskets of bodies that were recently buried, they saw that the bodies appeared to have gained weight, had blood trickling from their mouths, their skin appeared to be flushed, and their hair and nails had grown. In reality, the weight gain was caused by bloat, a condition caused by gases building up inside a body as bacteria devour the dead tissue. The blood coming from the mouth, sometimes the nose as well, most likely from other orifices too, was not the blood of some poor sucker who got bit, but rather the remaining blood of the individual that died. The flushed skin is the result of skin sloughing off during decay, causing the layers underneath to be exposed. As for hair and teeth continuing to grow, that's a myth too. See, the skin covering the hair and nails recedes after death, which causes them to eventually fall out. The same thing may happen with teeth as well. The closest depiction modern fiction has for the original version of vampires can be found in F.W. Murnau's classic Nosferatu, starring Max Schenck as the titular character. However, in the Victorian era, vampires ended up getting the image of the sexy, mysterious men and women we tend to think of today. The penetration of fangs into flesh was used by writers of that era as a metaphor for sexual penetration. The image of sexy vampires was resurrected by Anne Rice in her Vampire Chronicle series and has continued to this day. Hell, even badass vampire characters such as Alucard from Helsing have a kind of sex appeal about them. However, if you were to compare Miss Rice to Mrs. Meyer, Rice is a superior author as she knew what rules she was breaking when she wrote the Vampire Chronicles. Her vampires have immortality, super strength, super speed, and the ability to recover from almost anything that would kill a human. However, sunlight can kill her vampires, save for those who are fortunate enough to drink the blood of a vampire who possesses immunity to sunlight. So far, the only ones I know of are those who must be kept. A pair of vampires who, according to the mythos of the universe, have the ability to resist sunlight and are the ones who allegedly started the vampire race in the Vampire Chronicles. Damn, that was a lot of text.
And your point is... Seriously, what is the point of talking about how you annoy haters? So, there are teams in other fandoms. In Helsing, there's Team Alucard, Team Anderson, Team Helsing, Team Iscariot, and Team Millennium. We just don't call ourselves teams. We just consider ourselves to be fans. Dear God, those are terrifying! Also, what is the point of bringing up the merchandise as being a reason as to why it's perfect? My God! Your arguments are getting weaker and weaker! As I said before, it seems as Twit's arguments are getting weaker and weaker. Nightlight was mediocre at best, and Vampire Suck, I heard, got bad reviews. The only parody I found funny, and never saw, was a gay porn called Twinklight. The idea struck me as lulzy. I never got to Eclipse as I could not even start New Moon. Chances are, whatever action scenes were in it sucked donkey balls. This is your worst argument of all! It's not a fact or a halfway decent point, it's just a stupid fangasm!